to find supporting evidence, list that off here. Guys, I want to do like a quick example with you. Cross curricular just gives us an opportunity to really engage students. It gives us the opportunity to, for our teachers to work together, and most importantly, it gives our students a vehicle in which they see content cross in terms of merging with each other, being able to cover the same content, but being able to track it through different disciplines. So the essential question, I I'm sure we all have foods that we're very passionate about or hate, right? <laughs> so let's say, what's the worst food? English is reading and writing. That's across every curriculum. You have to be able to read and write in all subject matters. So to be able to use the claim evidence reasoning rationale or that protocol was just a way for our kids to really be able to engage with the material. Explain your claim with your evidence. So you would say something like. First, I worked with our ILC and she and I worked together to create a lot of these World War II stations that would provide our students with both the historical context and the ability to work on skills they would use in other courses. Two, can we go on the stage? I got one. On the green sticky, you're gonna write, what do you see? Literally, what do you see in this picture, okay? With the World War II stations, I took a lot of our context, but I used a lot of like the literary jargon that they would use in a lot of their other work for an English class or a science class or even a math class. Read both of their bios and then make a decision who's the MVP from that one. And then the same thing with the Tuskegee Airmen and then the side regiments. So your essential question is going to be which of the important people of World War II are the most important? Who was the most evil? All right, so that's your essential question. So for the different battles, I would just pick it up. Look at where it happened, look at the year and get it all matched up. Okay? My kids had a lot of fun in the stations, which was like my primary focus is, are they having fun learning? A lot of times they'll sit in a classroom and just take notes. I wanted them to actually be able to manipulate the materials and use the CER model to advance their own learning. What jumps out at you as to what might make them the worst? He said told us the most popular what do you think And then the why. August 9, 1945. We're done. You're done. All right. I would have you take a look at one of the ones in your European theater. I told y'all it was wrong. Um, because it had to be one it's one of correct in the line, but it's not correct in the, the location I in which you, theater it is. It's a Japan flag right there, man. So you're going to look at the picture. And green is something you see in the picture. Pink is what you think is happening, like your hypothesis about it. And then orange is what's a question you have about it. Perfect. So what do you think it is? It's an empty hallway, but it's very spacious. It definitely gave me more detail and more depth about how the Holocaust and World War II and all the events that took place and how people are really treated, and how the leaders and the top people really acted on those situations. So even though the Japanese Americans were being treated pretty terribly with the Japanese um, internment camps, they still were able to participate in the war. So the four pieces of paper are our four possibilities for a baby between this parent and this parent. This was a mass collaboration between a lot of the biology teachers here and the Algebra 1 teachers. So Ms. Conroy kind of led everything, but the lesson got passed back and forth several times, um, kind of from the math team to the biology team to make it mesh and to make sure that everything made sense from both sides. So each of you is going to have a different version, okay? okay. So you're going to have different powers per your creature, okay? Okay. okay. We created a lesson that would be a cross-curricular between math and science. So, and we wanted a time at where they were learning the same thing in science class that they were learning in math class. So we we're hitting both subjects at once. Five, six, seven, what's next? Who's got this? Three Ys. Three Ys. One, two, three. All right, let's go through. What does she do from there? Cross out the X's. So how many X's? One, two. So if it's X squared or XX, what's the gender of this character? Okay. XX is a girl, well done. So we're looking at genetics. So these are, the, these are our genes that code. So if we look at parent one, he has two traits, an orange and a blue. So what is the chance that these two orange fur parents have a 
blue first. Yes, the base. Okay. And you told me your largest variable is what? See, so you're gonna see right here. So if you got your largest variable to be C, what is it? So each station had a mixture of something that had related to science and into math. And each question, there was a question in each station that said specifically, how do these two subjects relate to each other? So the kids could sit there and connect their ideas to see how the science and the math intertwine with each other. At each station that they did this morning, they had a worksheet that went along with it. They had a teacher that was at each station that was kind of helping them and guiding them along. So there were a lot of formative assessment of just constantly asking them questions, leading them to the answers, um, and then their finished product, they had an answer sheet that is getting turned into their math teacher. We learned about different things like adding and subtracting, polynomials, box method, Punnett squares. I learned to like cooperate with people, working with people, and also having to use like your mind to calculate because we, do not, we don't have time to like calculate stuff with our phones or our calculators. The purpose in my mind was one, to get the kids engaged, two, to all those students who were in and out from COVID, to get them caught up from what they missed. They still have to, you know, pass the rest of the test and do well in the class, so it's a lot of, you know, circling material. That's the answer sheet for me to bring. What is it that, that you think? We talked about this last spring. We even developed a schedule to be able to do some of the cross-curricular activities this year. So we had folks that were on board from the very beginning. We learned about communication, collaboration, teamwork. So go ahead and look at those sources. Before we did the sessions, I wouldn't really think to use claim evidence reasoning, but since we've done the stations, I would probably utilize it more than I did before. On a scale of one to five, this was probably a four. There's definitely room for improvement. What are the traits going to be for this possibility? Criteria would be the pre and post assessments that we're going to sit there and see if what we did actually was a positive influence on their learning.